We're back, and our guest tonight is Jimmy Buffett, whose music cannot be classified. I guess you're glad of that, that the yeah, music can't be classified. Yeah. It, it's, it's funny that you go, it's doing interviews of newspaper primarily, when you talk to newspaper reporters, they, it's one of the first things they say is, How, what, do you, what do you classify? Mm -hmm. I go, well, I've never thought of classifying. But it's a real beauty, a Mexican cutie. How it got here, I haven't a clue. Wasting away again in Margarita Bay. Searching for my lost shaker of salt. Some people claim that there's a warm blade. Some people, I think, assume you're country, but you did win a CMA award, didn't you, one? I was nominated for nominated. one. No, I, I, I never won any kind of award for my music whatsoever. Well, they, no awards at all? No awards ever. You're kidding me. No. No, never. No Grammys? No. It's okay. <laughs> I'm really a simple Catholic altar boy who wanted to play bass in a band to meet chicks. I didn't want to be the front man, I, but a band excited me because it was adventurous. It was like getting to be a pirate. We can't do that anymore. They don't exist. But rock and roll bands were pretty close. When we had to start the band, we needed a PA system. I was responsible enough to have credit at the music store. So I became the leader of the band. From that, I developed, I had a knack for it. And I realized very early on that you had to have a sense of business to survive in entertainment. Heading up to San Francisco for the Labor Day weekend show. I got my hush puppies on. I guess I never was meant for glitter rock and roll. And honey, I didn't know that I'd be missing you so come Monday it'll be all right. I'm to get into it. I mean I had no idea when when I left Mobile, Alabama, well I had my guitar in the trunk of my sixty five yeah. convertible and I was going up there and I was waiting for him to come knock the door down, yeah. you know. Oh and I was gonna say, Well, what took you so long? <laughs> but uh, as we all know that did not happen. I remember back to days when you put your job down as musician or any kind of entertainer, you couldn't get a phone. You couldn't, you know, it was, it was, it was the curse of death if you, if you said you were an itinerant musician. I found out something about you. You just mentioned before the show, and I mentioned also you had a degree in journalism. Mm -hmm. And I thought, and I almost said, it's something you never worked in, though, because you went right into music. Yeah. But you did. You worked for Billboard magazine. I worked right here in Nashville for Bill Williams. When, in 1969, I believe I moved to Nashville to become an overnight success. I really do appreciate the fact you're sitting here. Your voice sounds so wonderful, but your face don't look too clear. So bar may bring a picture, another round of brick. Honey, why don't we get drunk and screwed? Why don't we get drunk and screwed? I worked for Billboard magazine in Nashville. I was covering a completely different kind of country music. Uh, and what has happened now, I think, has been a broader acceptance of, of, of it. It's certainly been more affected by pop. Jackson Brown, me included, Linda Ronstadt, Cheryl Crow, the Eagles, people like that.
So it's a much broader perspective. And I covered Porter Wagner and George Jones and, uh, and Tammy Wynette. I mean, it was straight ahead country music when I was down there. I wish I was a better guitar player. And I'm a fair singer. I'm not really a great singer. I took voice lessons. If I wanted to continue on, I figured I had to get some help. So uh, they're not my strongest suit. I wish I was better. I wish I could play like Eric Clapton. He went to Paris looking for answers to questions that bothered him so. He was impressive, young and aggressive. Saving the world on his own But the warm summer breezes The French wines and cheeses Put his ambition at bay People want to know about your lyrics and, write, and your writing of songs. Are you one of the types that, that inspirations come to you in a flash? Or can you sit down and say it's time to work and go to work on lyrics? And it's just... a combination of both. It's... Uh... Nowadays, the way I find myself writing these days is I, I don't write on the road, per se, a song, or since I'm traveling quite a bit. What I do is I keep a journal, mm -hmm. and uh, I write certain things down. I'm still keeping as obser observant as I can possibly be about just, because that's the secret. I mean, people think about, you know, how can you come up with a pencil-thin mustache or mm -hmm. something? It was, it's there every day, but you just have to be able to pick little, you know, little sort of pieces of life out and then people go, oh, I remember that. But I can admit to the fact that I don't take this stuff as serious as everybody else. I'm not a, I'm not a go to the studio and check every note kind of person. I'm a go capture the magic guy. At a moment like this, I can't help but wonder, what would Jimmy Buffett do? Funny you should ask, Al. <laughs> I'd say, oh, something tall and strong, make it a hurricane before I go insane. It's only half past twelve, but I don't care. Oh, something tall and strong, make it a hurricane before I go insane. And the award for vocal event of the year goes to... Five o'clock somewhere, Alan Jackson, Jimmy Buffett. I've never been nominated for anything. I thought I'd make it through with a clean slate. But <laughs> I was getting to the point where I was trying to say, well, you know, I think it was McCartney or somebody never got a Grammy or never got anything like that. So I was at that point of it would be cool not to get anything. Uh, and then it won. You've had a lot of success for mm -hmm. a lot of years now. And in one of your songs, you say if it suddenly ended tomorrow, mm -hmm. you could somehow adjust to the fall. Could yeah. you, in fact, do that? I think so. I'd miss it, but uh, I, I think that I've always left myself a loophole. I never could break into that strict, categorizable country sound, and uh, it's kind of ironic to me that I was never categorizable, and now I'm a category. 